Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you're joining from. Welcome to the Data Platform Geeks webinar. Today's webinar is on Azure ARM and Azure PowerShell for SQL Server Automation. Our speaker for today is Avanish Panchal. Uh, I'm Manohar Puna, I'm your host today, and we have Satya who will be moderating the webinar. Before we start the webinar, I would like to quickly talk about uh, Data Platform Geeks and the conferences that we do and the events that we do. As you, as you already know, most of you, uh, Data Platform Geeks is a community initiative by eDominus Systems. Uh, they also have other companies like SQL Maestros, which does a lot of uh, trainings for SQL Server, as well as there are a lot of hands-on labs and learning kits and other resources available. So please do explore SQL Maestros. Uh, they also have other companies which specialize in training the people who are in India and expand some ERP, which is uh, one of the fastest growing ERP in India. As for Data Platform Geeks is concerned, we are uh, the community initiative of eDominer, which is one of the largest uh, data platform communities in Asia. We run a conference, a three day conference, and uh, the, we have just concluded uh, this conference more than a month back in August in Bangalore, which was a three-day conference and we had two pre-conference full-day trainings. Uh, the conference, as picture speaks more than thousand words, like so we have almost thousand attendees in that room. Uh, this is a magnificent pick which represents the participation from all around uh, 15 more than 15 countries who participated at the conference this year we had speakers and experts from all around the world more than 15 countries again uh, the microsoft redmond uh, experts who are who work in the product team the microsoft mvps mcms regional directors all were present at this conference, and this is one of the largest uh, data platform conference around the world. There are links, uh, this slide deck and the video will be shared later on. So there are the in the slide deck, there are links to this photo. Please do visit. If you are part of this conference, that would be great. You can find yourself, tag yourself in the links. If you are not part of this conference, we look forward for uh, your participation in the next year's conference. The Dell Platform Summit 2019, the next year, we have already started planning and we are very uh, well ahead with planning this year. We have, uh, this year it's going to be a three day event as well as there will be three pre-conference full day trainings before the conference. As, uh, as uh, growing from the last year, we'll be having the seven tracks, 100 plus sessions, more than 50 speakers, and uh, definitely more participation from the Microsoft Redmond team. We'll be having worldwide experts, industry experts, the MVPs, MCMs, and the industry uh, stalwarts who will be participating at this conference. If you have attended this year's conference, you would have observed this conference is a marketing free. There are no sponsors. We have it's a hundred percent learning event. So please do explore about the conference at dps10.com, or you can reach us uh, contact at dps10.com or uh, directly on the phone number. As I speak, there are links being posted on the chat window. This will help you uh, go to these links once uh, once you are in the con uh, in the session, or you want to later on explore it. I'd quickly like to introduce you to the core team behind Data Platform Geeks. Amit Bansal, who is the founder and the president. Uh, I'm myself. I'm Manohar Puna. I'm the vice president. Uh, today's speaker, Avnish Panchal, who is a regional mentor and also the technical content editor for us. Uh, we have Sandeep Pani. Prince Rastogi and Surbhi Agarwal, they are also regional mentors and community leaders who are uh, behind this uh, deep data platform geeks community and they run, they are the people who run these events and bring it to you uh, in each city as well as online. We also thank uh, the eDominer teams who help us run these events, who help, uh, who do all the background work. They are the backbone. And uh, as you can see, there are a few group picks of different teams from Bangalore as well as Kolkata. Uh, this is a wonderful pick from the conference where Amit is uh, talking about the teams behind uh, their platform geeks and as well as the conference. Uh, we have the eDominer team to the left and the data platform geeks team to the right. And we'll specially, uh, special thanks to Microsoft who uh, are a great support in building this community. 
you if, if you are attending th uh, this webinar you would have already registered at that platform geeks.com if you are if you haven't and used uh, the mobile app to log in uh, please do visit data platform geeks uh, .com. and if you have registered you still need to explore a lot because there's a lot of free content available like there are free videos uh, links to all the previous recordings of the webinars uh, there's a lot of blogs that are available and you can also participate and help support the community and grow the community by uh, speaking at our events or becoming a regional mentor and running these events yourself so please do explore that platform geeks uh, .com. if you have any questions or if you would like to answer these questions and being an expert be uh, represented as an expert in the community you can always log into and register to our facebook group be a member uh, because this is one of the largest uh, not one of the this is the largest sql group on uh, facebook a, uh, all over the world like this is the biggest group so you can post your questions and you can get expert advice as well as you can answer some questions if you if you come across few of the questions that you think uh, you have some uh, expertise around they, we also have a group on LinkedIn so these links are posted on the chat window you can always go back and join these groups and I would like to quickly uh, talk about these two links as well which are relatively new all the recordings uh, webinar recordings as well as few of uh, some of the few uh, few of the technical recordings that we do are available on our youtube channel it's youtube.com slash sql server geeks please do uh, subscribe to that channel so that you don't miss any uh, recordings as well as uh, you can uh, use a mobile app called telegram which is similar to whatsapp but uh, very less restrictive as well as it has got desktop app as well so you can uh, uh, go to this link which is posted in the chat window again and there are instructions on how to join the mobile group so this is a quick way where you can still ask questions and get expert advice uh, on the mobile and i would like to quickly hand over to the speaker and before i do that please uh, post your questions use the Q&A panel to post your questions and the speaker will try to answer them at the end of the sessions uh, just in the interest of time if there are more questions uh, you can direct your questions which are not answered to our uh, groups which were mentioned earlier and uh, I would hand over this to Avnish. Avnish uh, over to you. Oh, thank you so much Manohar uh, and it was it is a great pleasure to be the part of this webinar uh, because this is a, one of the great avenue to talk across the globe sitting in just one room and definitely uh, I have been like <clears throat> I'm being grateful to see all those memories which we have just shared over the uh, over this session so thank you very much uh, before spending some more time uh, let me uh, go ahead and take uh, the control to share my screen Let me know if you're able to see that. Yes, I've we can see it. Thank you. Okay, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening, based upon your time zone. Um, my name is Avanish Panchal. I'm a technical architect with um, one of the IT company based out in Bangalore. And today we are gonna talk about um, Azure ARM and Azure PowerShell for anything related to the SQL Server automation i'm sure i will uh, try to make it as interactive it, it can be because i really want to do this session and i'm doing this um, uh, working on this technology for some time now and i'm going to uh, make sure that you find it this really interesting and i'm going to be playful and enjoy this speaking opportunity uh, just quick uh, things about the audience that what, what are the takeaways around it so it's going to be level 100 to 200 understanding of azure or powershell both things are expected out of it <clears throat> because it's, uh, we are gonna walk through uh, both the tools um, pretty much in all the demo this is a, a pretty much a demo driven session so that's why uh, this understanding is pretty vital here um, if you are aware about SQL Server setup and configuration um, in pretty vast area, then probably you will find it more interesting because uh, this is like a quite a bit of task for all the DBAs and architects and whosoever is associated with SQL Server. So trying to um, automate as much possible. 
at the end of the session you will be getting a fair enough idea about what is basically uh, and a high level picture about the azure resource manager and how it is tightly coupled with um, azure rm powershell because they go pretty much hand in hand and at the end of the session uh, you will get a uh, uh, a fair enough idea how to uh, do your small to large level of automation with the help of Azure ARM. Um, a little bit about myself, I'm in the industry for 15 years and so on and so forth. Um, uh, quite a few things which I've already shared by um, Manohar. So about the region mentor portion of, uh, which I'm dedicating to as a community effort I'm doing for data platform geeks. And I'm pride. I'm proudly say that this is a, a wonderful opportunity for me, and I highly encourage you all also to come forward if you really want to join because that gives an immense number of opportunities in terms of community and voluntarily efforts. I do uh, blogging as well and be the part of all the editions of Data Platform Geeks Conference. Uh, this is <laughs> a quick introduction about myself, how, how I look like. So a um, little bit of prerequisite. So throughout this session, as I mentioned at the start of this uh, session or webinar that throughout this, um, this whole webinar, I'm gonna talk uh, more about the tools uh, which are gonna be used as for day in day out work related to Azure ARM and all. So you should be aware about it, that what tools are vital for its this overall demo purpose and eventually when you are gonna use in your organization. Uh, the best advantage is Microsoft is very much uh, are putting a lot of efforts in terms of open source areas. So we are not restricted to do this kind of automation only on a Windows kind of a laptop. We can fairly do enough with a MacBook also. All you need to do is Visual Studio 2017 code rather than Visual Studio 2017 um, community edition or enterprise edition and all. Okay, so um, let's quickly move to that uh, question here. Uh, I'm not sure that how much you are, how many you are aware about the infrastructure as a code, which is called IAC. But I, I think that uh, as I mentioned, this this um, uh, webinar is very much dedicated to IT professionals or architects or uh, senior DBAs who are uh, leveraging their day-to-day -day automation in terms of Azure, and they want to roll it out for um, five like five, seven different continents and 100 data centers or what, so on and so forth. So uh, they need a lot of coding they may need to do it. Um, and that's where we, we are gonna talk about it, how we can ease out the pain here. So uh, just a quick idea about uh, how do we manage the IT infrastructure in a current scenario? And just typically in terms of a typical DBA or administrator or, or uh, any other IT professional who is associated. But this is a very tough job. If you go to an Azure console and we ask you to deploy one SQL instance, you may fi find it fairly easy to do that. But if I'm gonna ask you that, you need to standardize all your installation in Azure with all security models that you're gonna follow and a lot of other things, then it might be very, very tedious for you and you would not like to work like this. So that's why, that's where, the managing IT infrastructure as a code comes into the picture. And how it depicts that you have a fairly large infrastructure where very limited number of um, uh, IT professionals or system admins are involved into there due to the security and a lot of other concerns. And they are gonna automate pretty much everything in terms of code or rather than going and deploying um, as an individual deployment. So, uh, let me just quickly move to the next slide here uh, and talk a little bit more about Azure R ARM. Um, Azure uh, Resource Manager is, is it's a incarnation of Azure Service Management, which was like uh, up to 2014. You might see um, that um, we used to have manage.windowsazure.com for all kind of uh, um, Azure related work, but eventually, uh, Microsoft has come up uh, with an upgraded version, which is uh, portal.azure.com. And that's where you do see the Azure a ASM, which was previously as Azure Service Management, which was a little tedious task, has been reincarnated in terms of a ARM. 
and why we need it the most important question is why we need it if you look into the current world infrastructure uh, as a code there are many tools available there are many tools and um, th some are the really really big market leader like Terraform, which is coming from HashiCorp or um, Azure uh, talk about Azure uh, cloud formation or chef Ansible, Puppet, Google Cloud Platform Manager, Salt, Stack, Heat, which is another uh, open source tool. But when you're working with an Azure cloud infrastructure, Azure ARM is the best bet. And it is very easy to learn because a lot of the administrators are coming from a Windows background and they know how to play around with Windows PowerShell, um, and so on and so forth. So that makes it very easy. And you can deploy and manage all your infrastructure need starting from infrastructure as a service or platform as a service. And basically, Azure, if you look into two things, like here, yeah, there are two different types of resource manager mode. One was the classic, right? And this is uh, the new one, which is um, the latest one, which is no more classic, it's an ARM. A um, few more things about ARM. I'm gonna spend a little bit more time here because I have uh, I have found that this is very much important to understand Azure ARM in a pretty vast way. Uh, so, what are the benefits? Why we are doing this? Why uh, why we have to really do and learn? A system administrator has to learn a coding. That that's all the questions which I do come across pretty frequently. So. Uh, the best part here is when you're using an ARM on any other infrastructure as a code tool, it is pretty much declarative provision resources. What does it mean basically? What do you mean by a declaratively provisioning and resource? Means it is a way to describe the resource in a group and with just the, with the help of a simple JSON document. Most of us are aware about the JSON. It is a fairly easy text file which can be read by anybody uh, rather than being any technical expertise involved into that and which little indentation and understanding. The second most important thing about um, this whole automation is or um, coding about this is it is a much smarter and the faster provisioning, uh, provisioning method for any kind of a resource. Like given me, uh, let me give you an example. Uh, think about you have to deploy a virtual machine and you need to create a storage account first. If you are aware about uh, uh, Azure, <clears throat> then you have to uh, first create a storage account and why you need that? You need that because you need a virtual machine uh, because the virtual machine needs a storage account where all the logs and the VSDs are restored. So you need that. But what ARM does that, on the ARM other hand, it is uh, basically it is able to inspect the resource that you are telling to provision it and figure it out that what dependencies are coming across. So you need not to worry about it that, okay, I forgot that it, it needs a network card. I, I don't need, uh, I, was, I was like just forgotten, right? I just skipped it. So you need not to do that it it is very smart enough it goes and look into the order that all the things are in place then only the code is going to get executed another very important thing over here is which we need to understand then the grouping as a unit of the management i'm sure um, you are aware about the resource grouping and if you're not then probably in my demo you will see that so you will get a uh, uh, high level idea how the resource grouping is done. So before the ARM, if you look into that, the relationship between the resources was something which we had to manage ourselves. We were responsible for managing uh, the re resource grouping and all. But as the technology is evolving and Microsoft has come up with the idea of a resource grouping, it includes this try to compute the cost across multiple resources to determine all cost of the application is together. It's need not like think about um, all the non-production is grouped together, or the development is grouped together, or the test is grouped together, or production is grouped together. So they are different verticals that you have created in your organization and you need not to worry about like how they are interconnected to each other. You need not to worry about it and how you are gonna bundle it up. The security concerns are also handled at the group or which we call it periphery level rather than at the resource level and so on and so forth. So uh, I think uh, 
this gives you a fair enough idea about Azure uh, Resource Manager. And one last thing I think uh, I also want to mention it here. Uh, this is uh, a different word which, which many of us might have read in mathematics way back, which is called idempotent uh, provisioning of resources. What is idempotent? <laughs> Means that you had uh, to account the situation which are not where all are not same, but not at all. Means uh, basically, uh, when you are doing an automating, the provisioning of a resource, that you had to account for the situations where some, but not all of your resources would be successfully provisioned, right? So in that case, taken back the same virtual machine example, if you have a storage account that was provisioned successfully, but your network, uh, virtual network has failed to provision the and correct then you had to write an additional amount of code or which we call as compensating code to handle that situation and it has to be handled or you may need to go and do it uh, in the cloud uh, azure cloud uh, portal and do it manually so you really don't want to deal it when because you are working with a large infrastructure right you really want don't want to do that what basically arm does when you send a json document describing that this is all my environment is this is a virtual machine this is a group um, this is a storage account and so on and so forth and this is the database sitting on it arm knows that which resource is already exist and which need not to do the provisioning and which needs to be do uh, which needs to be provisioned so your code is not going to re-execute everything again that's another biggest advantage of arm Okay, um, I think I have spent enough time on it. Let me just quickly walk through because I have a, quite a few demos which I really want to use to see that. Um, and few of the offering which I have uh, already talked about it. There are six offering which comes with Azure Resource Manager, which is resource grouping. I think I have given a fair enough idea about it. I have also talked about the dependencies. Uh, what I have not talked about is repeatable deployment. And what does it mean? Uh, when you are deploying a code at the first time or you want to redeploy the code again and again azure arm is very smart enough and it is very helpful to redeploy the code which is just tweaked not the whole bunch so there is no it is not that complex like every time you need not to deploy end-to-end -end thing it is very much modulated programming which you can do that and without knowing that you are doing a modulated programming means you are just going to use the, uh, execute the same set of code with some kind of addition or subtraction in the code but it is not going to redeploy everything from end to end so that is why it is a re -de a repeatable deployments are extremely useful uh, let's come to the deployment template and that's where uh, my demo is uh, talks about how you can deploy based upon the template so let me give you a quick example Suppose I am a, a, I'm a architect or I'm a senior resource for the company or asset for the company and company is having is dispersed across different geographical locations, right? And you need to deploy a, a code or, or infrastructure across different region, but you have to follow a certain standards and norms which is governed by the company either it might be in terms of security or either it might be in terms of um, uh, standardization of a patching or any so on and so forth thing how you're gonna make that everything is uniform across all the continents or all the geographical locations that we have it. that's where azure resource managers deployment template comes into the picture you define a template you pass the parameter which is on the runtime based upon the parameter file i have a demo for that as well and based upon uh, the parameter file and it is going to take care itself so all the locations are doing their job doing their business but there's no deviation from one region to another reason in terms of standardization across the enterprise rbac uh, role based access it's pretty much um, uh, I am a thing which um, I I just don't want to talk much, but just for a quick idea about it, 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 it is basically an extremely important for the cloud-based organization uh, uh, to let them know that what, when, and how things has to be there. So it gives you, it's just like a, a like tuner where you can fine tune and grain the control of your access for all your resources in the Azure. 
um, resource tagging it is very simplified way if i tell you um, it is like your uh, kind of a project code we are all your com in your company you're an it company you are assigned to a project code and all the resources are into that so based upon that project code all the billing can be done or the resource management for the hr can be done rather than going at the intricacy level of it okay so uh, I see a question from Srikant. Srikant, I understand there might be a lot of questions here, so we are not going to get disconnected of this session. Uh, you do have a fairly enough accessibility to mean to reach out all the groups which um, Manohar has mentioned over this session. Um, and I will be able to answer you all your questions at the end of the session. So we can, we just do not deviate from the content that we are, I'm gonna cover it up because this is a pretty vast subject and I have tried to simplify it as much possible. Uh, so uh, please uh, uh, stay for a while and I'm, I'm, I give you assurance that I'm gonna answer all your questions. Uh, let me quickly move to that more into detail. Like I say three arms of arm. What are the three arms of ARM? Resource type, resource grouping, and resource provider. If you are working in Azure for some time now, then you must be aware about that. What is the resource type? Resource type is a very simplified thing. It like in current scenario, in current organization, you can look at it. It can be a virtual machine. It can be a storage account. It can be a database. It is basically a unit which you can deploy into an Azure. Resource grouping. Um, as I have given you an idea about it, how we can group together means you can create a different stack for your application. It can be a horizontal um, uh, partitioning or it can be a vertical thing, means you can tag from application uh, like um, environment wise, non uh, like development, QA, production, or all the verticals where your application server will be together, your database server to be together, and your load balancing another. If you're gonna do in horizontal, then probably all your database servers, which is related to non-production are gonna be together, and all the non-production application server together. So that's the way resource grouping can be done. It is basically a container uh, for um, multiple resources, and they have a common life cycle. That's the most important thing, they have a common life cycle. Uh, resource exists in one resource group and it may not exist. I will show you how you can find the resource group. Uh, if you just really want, if you're really interested, I can, I will show you that as well, just for uh, people who are a little beginner here or it's good for others as well. Uh, resource provider, every cloud provider has a lot of offerings in terms of uh, resources. So services that supplies the resource might be it might be compute it might be storage it might be um, any kind of a more services that you wanna uh, use in terms of a provider so they microsoft also provides quite a bit of uh, providers uh, which are listed there and i will give you a very simple command just to run an azure uh, partial uh, command mode and you will get all the resource provider available over there so this is these are the basically three arms uh, which I really want to show you here. Azure Resource Manager architecture. This is this is the important piece in this overall session. So just uh, be with me for some time on this, and it is going to help you a lot. So when I look at the environment, we have two types of workload when we are running an Azure. Either it can be a platform as a service or it can be an infrastructure as a service. So what are the offerings we have it as a platform as a service? It's like a database, which is service, or MySQL database, or any network, or any, any web application. But when we are talking about infrastructure as a service, uh, we have a compute, we have virtual network, we have a database, we have load balancer, and so on and so forth, which is sitting on the higher side of it, um, uh, on, uh, which is underneath, um, uh, hardware or a service for the past and they are all if you look into this diagram they are all grouped together as a resource and they are all sitting under a one subscription and on the subscription we have a azure account so this this is basically what we have seen so far now let me show you that where exactly arm sits or fits here so there is a Azure Resource Manager, which is sitting at the account level rather than at subscription level. This is a very important point, which you need to um, 
um, keep it in mind while you're working with Azure Resource Manager, that is not something at the subscription level, that is at the account level. And how does it work with the help of a provider? So on top of Azure Resource Manager, Azure Resource Manager is going to talk to the provider, identify what offerings that you have, and based upon those offerings, I'm gonna leverage what I want to deploy for my enterprise. Now, these two layers are clear to me, but how they are gonna be exposed, because uh, different providers have different type of coding, different type of standard, how they are gonna communicate to each other. That is very much simplified with the term with the help of Azure Resource Manager because Azure Resource Manager works with REST APIs. And what this is basically, what do you mean by uh, REST APIs in terms here? So there is one set of REST APIs which is called Resource Manager a Management API, which is where you send your ARM template. You are gonna send your ARM template and that REST API takes the Azure command or a template and what basically it does. It basically passes the JSON, fills in any parameter that are passed in, execute any ARM template function. And it also, the last piece it does, it calls the REST API of whatever type of resource that needs to be created to create the whole infrastructure need or your platform as a service need. So what four things, just keep it in mind. REST API is going to execute the ARM command, which has been passed from the Azure Resource Manager. And it does it does parse in JSON file. I will show you how it looks like and all. So don't worry about it. This is fairly for the architecture perspective you need to understand. And it fills any parameter that you want to pass. Either you can run time, you can pass the parameter or you can pass a parameter file also. If you want a more simplification and more standardization, then you can pass a parameter file also based upon your choice. And then it execute the ARM template function. And then it calls the REST API for whatever types of resource you want to deploy and manage and edit and delete and what so on and so forth. So this is um, a very, very high level picture. Um, I tried to simplify it for you and make best out of it. Um, let me, uh, as I keep on saying um, in this slide that template, uh, Azure Resource Manager template, parameter files. So we need to understand that how we can, what exactly the ARM template, how it looks like, and what best we can make out of it. So what is an ARM template? It is just a JSON file and it works as an infrastructure, as a code to the Azure. It is very simple and you can use it repeatedly. As many times you want, you can go ahead. And deployment mode, there are two types of deployment mode, um, which will be, uh, one is complete and incremental. There are benefits and downside for both the things, whether you, which option you have to go for, either go for complete deployment mode or you have to go for incremental modes that you need to identify based upon your need. This is very, very much subjective. So, I'm, I'm sorry. So let me quickly talk about uh, more into that. So you need to, because this is very, very important. So if you need to deploy, if, if you, if you need a way to deploy basically infrastructure as a code to Azure, Azure resource template becomes an obvious need, an obvious way of doing it because it is very, very simple and repeatedly. That's what I mentioned. Um, uh, if I talk more about it, basically what you're gonna do that, you're gonna define the object that you want, what type of object you want to deploy, what is the name of the object, what is the property of the object, and everything is going into one place that is a JSON file, which can be easily, very easily understood by ARM REST API. And this JSON file can be checked into the source control and managed like a source code file. So we've previously, we never had this kind of, a, um, uh, this kind of a accessibility or provision um, method to do, control your source code for the infrastructure that you deploy. We used to do a lot of work with VB scripts or JavaScripts in the past uh, to do a lot of automation, but uh, 
managing them into a source control itself is a tedious task. But with the help of a JSON file, it is very easy, very simplified way to do that. And ARN template is our, what really gives you the ability to roll out all your code as infrastructure. By using this template, you can repeatedly deploy your solution throughout its life cycle and have confidence in your resource that all are in consistent state. There's no deviation because you have thoroughly tested, redeployed, and amended it. So like today, in today's world, we are mostly worried about it. Okay, if I'm gonna consider this change for the infrastructure and that has to be deployed with multiple sites or multiple data centers or multiple places, that's a very, we always raise as a high risk change. And getting that kind of change approved is a very, very risky thing. And it requires a lot of management, consultation, debates and all, right? So to override that, when you deploy your infrastructure as a code, which is checked in, thoroughly tested, you can have a proof that which you can showcase to your management or change control board that this is what my proof is. And you need to trust rather than just verbal, there is a proof which is certified and you can go ahead and get edge over all your deployment. <clears throat> so this, is, this gives you a fair enough idea about ARM template. Uh, now let me talk about the elements of the ARM template. So there are basically six uh, um, elements that we have it here. Uh, two elements, we do not do anything over there because they are pretty much static and I will show you why they are static. You will understand as well, which is two elements are schema and content version. They are, those are two static things which we do not change um, most of the time. What we basically change is the parameters variables, resource, and the output of the resource. This is also an optional thing, but that's why you do see in the required field as no. So outputs are basically all are optional, you may need. So we are gonna play around with these parameters, variables, and what type of resource that you're gonna deploy. Uh, this is a parameter file uh, for any template that you uh, will be looking into this uh, session uh, while I will be switching uh, my mode to the demo. Um, so this is a pretty fairly easy to read file. Uh, it does not require any major technical expertise into that. Uh, parameter, parameters are basically a critical component. So let's have a quick uh, look about that. What are the parameters? So if you look at it here, there are the parameter where <clears throat> I'm gonna provide the default value, which is a string type of, which type of resource you want a parameter it is, it can be a string because this is a dynamic. So based upon the value, that is why you do see an uh, square bracket here. That, that means that is an array of values. So you can provide an array of values into it in the parameter and you can define it what type of value you have in that array. If you have a numeric value, then you have to type define the type. Default value is always a string. Metadata, metadata is just a, um, uh, it's a simple as, uh, simplified way for you for future reference that what exactly this uh, parameter file is all about. So you can just type in your, some text here for your future reference. Okay, variables. So we have covered parameters, we have covered um, so very, uh, coming to the variables. So variables are like, which you have to, um, define at the runtime also, which uh, I will show you in my demo that how to define at the runtime or you can pass it directly to the window uh, in the templates itself. Uh, what are the resources? That's, that's, that's one of the most important thing is here. Um, we need to understand a bit um, about the resources. There are what type of resource you are gonna deploy. Most in, the, in this demo, it talks about a lot of uh, SQL Server. So that's why you do see the SQL Server written over here. What kind of version? I'm gonna talk about the SQL Server 2017 or 16 version basically. So I'm using a version 12.0. Name of the parameter, I'm gonna pass this SQL Server primary name, any, any name that you want to pass as a parameter, you can pass as a parameter. That's why you do see a braces here. If you don't want to pass as a parameter, then you can directly put a name of the resource, what resource you are gonna use it, okay. Then the API version, this is again for Microsoft use. Um, you do not have much uh, say here, but um, this is pretty kind of a static value. 
then i'm going to talk about the location at which location it is there then again it is driven by um location is nothing uh, more nothing different as a region west us or south india or asia whatever the reason you're going to def define so again it is being picked up from the parameter file that's why do you see a curly bracket sorry square bracket here now coming to the properties of the resource means what is going to be the administrative login what will be the password for the login i just don't want that my template exposed um, any kind of uh, uh, security concerns so that's why i am going to pass with the help of a parameter here and what version it is going to be used so uh, let's quickly this is fairly three things which i have mentioned to you that parameter resources and variables that you are going to be using throughout your template based deployment or direct deployment with the help of azure resource manager module <clears throat> So let's quickly have a look at how a template deployment works. So this is just one single command. And I mean it, trust me, this is just one single command you're gonna execute and your whole deployment will take place seamlessly. There's no challenges gonna, you gonna stuck up. And what is the command, which is named as a new Azure RM resource group deployment? Uh, what is the deployment name? It is just a static value that you're gonna pass for your reference. Then you're gonna provide under which resource group because everything is grouped under resource. If you want to deploy anything into Azure resource without a resource grouping, you cannot do that. So you need to pass the resource group name here. And then you're gonna pass the template file. What template file which is a, again a JSON file. Now we have to, this is, this is fairly an optional thing you may have a template file parameter file or you may not have be as i have shared in this session that all of the things are uh, uh, shown in this uh, presentation as a parameter so that's why i have included as a parameter here okay good so let's quickly how many minutes we have okay we are going to have another 18 to 17 to 18 minutes and i'm going to just quickly talk to you about um what uh, like how does it look like when you are working in azure um, arm module and how we are gonna get the access of it and how you're gonna deploy that and also on and so forth so um, let me uh, just quickly share some commands here which we will be using it uh, if you want to note it down you may and uh, anyways uh, we will be uploading these uh, presentations so you will get those things uh, first thing you have to have an um, install an Azure RM module into your onto your laptop or server from wherever you want to do that and then you have to import the module the standard procedure then you have to correct the Azure RM account or you can add as well and then you are going to create a resource group then so on and so forth I'm, I'm just giving you a few idea how to do that if you want just don't want to con uh, connect here then you can use an azure uh, add azure rm account which just pops up in ie and you can fill the credential there so everything is hidden here and you can get the details about the subscription and all and how does it look like because in this session i will not be able to sh uh, show you the installation of the module because um, it is already present here and it takes little time so I just want to share a quick snippet about it that how when you run this command install module ARM what it gonna do that and what um, option it pops up so without putting more time uh, on this um, let me just quickly switch into the demo mode now okay so here is my um, uh, PowerShell, which I have just opened it up. And what I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna just run the first command is get module, and I'm gonna see what are the list available. Do I really have the Azure ARM module or not? That is the first thing I'm gonna show you here. And you do see that all, all of this module, ARM module and Azure module is there as well. And where you do see Azure analysis services, automation, backup, billing, and so on and so forth. So most of the time, what we are gonna use that, Azure SQL, because this session, it talks about uh, SQL installation and automation, how we can do that. 
So you will be using this module fairly at multiple times. Now, let me um, show you, as I, I just told you, how to look at the providers. What providers do we have it, if you recall that. So I'm gonna say um, get uh, Azure RM uh, source uh, resource uh, providers, right? And then I'm gonna uh, add some, sorry, I'm gonna, not gonna add here. What I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna just select object. And what object I'm gonna say provider uh, name space. And I'm gonna resource types. And it is gonna give us the detail about it, what providers namespaces we have and what type of resources are available into. So this gives you an um, idea about it, that what kind of resource types we do have it here. We have domain names, we have like virtual machines and extensions, and we have some databases also. So let me just quickly filter it out that what resource provider we have and I'm gonna say here, let me just do a filter here. I'm gonna say a provider namespace is gonna be a Microsoft.SQL, right? I'm sorry. And I'm gonna run and see what providers we have in my under Microsoft SQL. So you do see a lot of, uh, uh, lot of things here. These are many providers on which uh, state they are and which location they are available because some of the services, all the services are not available at this stage. Um, let me, uh, that reminds me one thing. Um, now Microsoft uh, Azure data centers are being deployed across the world. So they have included Microsoft SQL Server as a P0 means, what does it mean as a P0? So whenever a new site is gonna be developed, P0 means it's a priority zero, man. That is gonna be a default service which is gonna be available. So you need not worry about it if you accidentally choose any other location. It has to be available there. So coming back here, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say select object and I'm gonna say resource types. I just want to see all the resource types available here. So you will see what are the resource types that we have it here. So a little bit of more filtered information. It is quite bunch of it. So, so that gives you a quick idea about how to work with Azure ARM uh, PowerShell and how to run the commands here. They are very, very simplified here. So um, let me come back here and do another demo, which I'm gonna show you as a platform as a service and how to deploy your um, platform as a service or SQL Server into Azure, which is platform as a service with the help of Azure ARM um, command line tools. Okay, so what I'm gonna do it here, I'm gonna again pull it there and then I'm gonna uh, pull a file here and let me just quickly brief it about what I'm doing it here. I have, uh, I'm, I'm gonna add an account under which account it is gonna run, or uh, what is gonna be, at what time it is starting, then I'm gonna create a group, resource group, then I'm gonna add that resource group to the Azure with the help of a resource grouping, then I'm gonna uh, add a SQL server, which is based upon on South India location, and then I'm gonna add a database to that ser server that we have recently built it out. And the database name is fourth edition. And I'm gonna use uh, the basic um, version of it. Then I'm gonna create a firewall rule also because uh, that is very important if you want to connect your uh, database servers which are hosted in Azure and you want to uh, exit it from your local computer, then you have to do the firewall thing as well. So this is fairly, uh, 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 pretty much all I'm gonna do it here and I'm gonna just the time that how much time it will take just to deploy that. And if think about it, if I have to deploy the same thing across five continents, 20 sites, how much time it will take? 
so what it does it just pops up this i'm gonna put my details here <clears throat> because what i have used and uh, add azure account so that's why that pop-up has come and now it started deploying it the deployment has started and you this this is the pop-up so i for a security reason i just don't want to exhibit any of my password to you so that's why i'm gonna say a sql admin is gonna my sql login and i'm gonna this is the password so i'm just passing the um, credential for my sql server sa account or the connectivity which i'm gonna get it it's a standard thing which we do it on a daily basis when we are deploying or, uh, or installing a sql server So it is not gonna take much of the time. That's what I have guessed around. It totally depends on your bandwidth also and response back. But what I'm anticipating, it should not take more than two minutes of time. <laughs> Think about it. You have just defined a template. You have just defined a standard code which you have checked in into your source control. And every time um, an infrastructure need comes from the business, you are just gonna pull it run that command and you you go back uh, to other work and things are deployed for you so as simple as possible so what it does look at it here um, it is uh, a resource group it is a server which is based in south india uh, the credential is here um, admin password the version that we have selected and this is the db server fully qualified name which we have given and Microsoft has given the FQDN for that. Uh, it has also given a resource ID as well. So if, if you recall that when I was showing you the provided details, we have shown you the Microsoft.SQL and that's what the path is here. So under the Microsoft SQL, there's a servers. Under the server, your database server name is here. <clears throat> so I have given a deployment start time here so just to give us an idea that how long it actually took now look more details here it has deployed the database also so far it was built with the server and after that it has deployed the database also in the again in the service region what uh, collation name it has selected how many buyers those are all standard offering and it's pretty much based upon the basic version that i have selected so you can more drill down into those details, but this is just to give you fair enough idea about that. And then it has done the firewall rule also, which I have mentioned. So if you look at the time, it has completed 5.53 and 38. And at what time it has started? 5.51 and 26. So how long is basically took? Little over two minutes, which is just fantastic. In two minutes, you have deployed a SQL server and how it looks. The most important thing, we want, we are all SQL DBAs and administrator from a different <laughs> thing. So we, we have to look at it here and what we are gonna see. My, under that resource group, my database server is here. My fourth addition database is here. And whether I'm able to connect it or not, I'm gonna use the tool, which is, Visual Studio. So what I'm gonna do it, add the SQL server. I'm gonna Azure, refresh the database. It should pop up the database that we have just created. Yes, I can see that. I'm gonna connect it. I'm gonna give us a password here. And I'm into my DB. So, I can see my databases, which are there. Fourth edition databases created. If I have to do any kind of a coding into, then I'm gonna good to go. So your developer need not to wait for a longer time for your deployments or standardization and so on and so forth. So this is what I just really wanted to talk to you about um, to give you an idea about, and that's what my power uh, pass demo. So if you look at this, this is what we have done. Uh, this this is what uh, we have created a resource group under that resource group we have created a database and under that database server sorry 
this was a database server under that database server we have created a database itself which was fourth edition and this is the, the way they are connected to the each other at the periphery level so the same thing if you are coming back here it is the same thing here our database server or if you look at it here also you get the same thing this is your database server this is your resource group name this is a fully qualified name and this is your database name so fairly so you have seen that how easy is to deploy the code into an azure uh, with the help of arm and arm template as well so uh, i know we do have very less time to do that but let me just quickly wrap it up so we have a i just don't I want to skip this because this is really I want to show you here what exactly the template based deployment because so far what the deployment we have done it is based upon your um, own purely uh, based upon Azure RM partial I have not integrated any JSON thing into it so let's quickly have a look how the JSON thing comes into the picture um, for the JSON thing uh, let me go here and let me open a file which is a template okay so this is the template here i have not put anything into this and it is a parameter it is variable resource output i have taken it and if you really want to know how to manage this then you have to go from here to windows and there's a json outline you go here and what i'm going to do it here i have to add a resource what resource i want to add i want to again add a uh, first i have to add a server so i'm gonna say webinar as a, okay webinar as a server and what another resource i want to add another resource and what resource i want to deploy a database then it automatically selects which server i'm gonna say 20th september is gonna buy my database name sorry about the goofy names here <laughs> and see how e easy it is it has created fairly all of your code you need not to do any kind of a coding all you have to do is just check in this code and make any tweaking that you really want to do it here or make it as a baseline and go ahead and deploy that it is going to do all your background coding so if you are not very much well aware about how to do the coding and all first thing it is json it is very simple and as you get your hands dirty with that you will get to know how simplified it is so without spending more time here let me just quickly open a file which i have already created for you and there are two files one is a deployment file uh, where i have uh, defined all the objects and another is a parameter file most important is a parameter so there's no difference they both are json and only a difference it is one is as a dot parameters so i'm going to open that and here is all my credentials which i just don't want to expose to anybody and uh, that's why i just put it here and what i'm going to do it i'm going to again open it here and deploy the code here how do is it does it look like so what i'm going to do it here i have given the template file path and parameter file path which is uh, which is written here what these two file path just keep it in mind they are parameter.json and this is just a json file and what basically it does i'm going to call this procedure i'm going to pass it parameter it is going to pop up all those things and it is going to check whether the resource group is already existed or not if not it is going to create the group and one wonderful command azure resource de group deployment and what is this going it is going to deploy under this group name which you have opted over here the template file name and the template parameter file name which it is going to pick it up from there if you do not pass it then it will go the else code and it is going to get executed so let me uh, what i'm going to do it here uh, we have already at the end of the session so i may need to take a few questions here what i'm going to do i will let this code run in the background and meanwhile i will answer your question so we do see it here so first thing it is going to ask for my subscription id so i have my subscription id here um, then i'm gonna say a resource name dpg 
uh, deployment name i am saying webinar dep dep and it is logging now it is asking my credentials here so i'm again gonna say give the details here hope it takes and let it run okay meanwhile it is running uh, let's quickly take the questions here so Srikant is asking that pass and the IA is different. So uh, Srikant, to answer your question, uh, Microsoft suggests or offers, um, which is a software as a service, as a, or we call it database as a service in AWS as a pass. So platform as a service is pass. And infrastructure as a service is, is like any kind of infrastructure. So your database is just not sitting in in air it is going to sit on a server so that what when you are requesting a server from azure it is going to be as an infrastructure as a service but when you are deploying the db on that server that is a platform as a service so that's the difference uh, guys please uh, keep on pushing your questions here i'm on the screen so i may be able to answer your questions as quickly as possible before i hand it over to uh, manohar for final or end of the session. Any other questions? If I am not able to answer your questions in this session, uh, you always have my uh, details. You have already seen my email ID and you have other my credential in my presentation, as well as you can reach to our database group and Facebook group where you can drop your questions and we should be able to answer you. Uh, thanks Avnish. Uh, while the script runs, I think, uh, is this the last step in the presentation yes that's the last step all right so before you take any further questions i would like to quickly cover a few slides and then uh, i'll hand it over back to you to take further questions mm -hmm. right. sure please go ahead let me just share the screen while the script runs all right um, i'd like to quickly walk you through a few slides before we end this session and uh, avnish can take a few more questions so please drop in your questions while i do this um, i'd like to quickly again uh, mention to you the groups the facebook group the linkedin group and the mobile group where you can join and ask your questions or get in touch with the community talk to your uh, community colleagues uh, in data platform geeks and improve your uh, expand your social reach in the community uh, a quick word from our sponsors uh, sql maestros uh, they do a lot of advanced sql training uh, there are a lot of hands-on labs that are available the best way to learn is basically when you work by it uh, by yourself so please do explore their hands-on labs there are a lot of uh, labs on the site a uh, few most of them are paid but there are a few uh, test ones which you can uh, check for free there are on-site training as well as SQL health check uh, that SQL maestros run. There are a lot of online master classes coming up. So these are full day classes, but they are split into two days. So you have four hours on one day and four hours on the second day. These are given by delivered by the world renowned experts in each particular areas like on the cognitive services and the R programming. We have Steph Locky, we have uh, Greg Lowe, who is an MVP, Spotlight MVP, as well as MCM. He's doing uh, full, a full day. Uh, when I say full day, it's again the two half days. So full day masterclass on indexes, as well as uh, developers and DBS reporting services for developers and DBS as SQL Server Security. We have uh, Andy Leonard on integration services, ha Hamish Watson as on DevOps, Peter Myers on Power BI, uh, Warigrad on HADR, and uh, uh, I mean on uh, uh, query tuning as well as performance tuning and then we have Satya on uh, TSQL querying for beginners So there are a lot of information available on SQL But you can also get in touch directly with them uh, through email or through the phone numbers which are again pasted in the chat window yeah. uh, uh, About the HOLs which I mentioned earlier. There's a lot of content which you can try it by yourself like you can uh, just launch an HOL and there are instructions that you can practice on your own at your own pace. So please do explore and uh, try to get the subscriptions because it's really useful and uh, 
there's a lot of uh, content that you can learn from. Again, I would quickly want to highlight that particular link, the youtube.com slash SQL Server Geeks, because all the webinars are recorded and you can easily go and view them later for your reference. And also do subscribe to that channel so that you get latest updates whenever we post uh, webinar videos or any other technical videos that we make and post it on this link. With that, I will leave the floor for Q&A uh, for Avnish and uh, I would like to quickly thank everyone for taking your time and attending this webinar today. Uh, have a great day and uh, over to you Avnish. Thank you. Thank you Manohar. So guys, uh, if you are able to see my screen, let me know. Yes, Avnish, we can see your screen. Okay, which screen you? <laughs> the PowerPoint? The PowerShell. Yeah, okay. So if uh, you look at it here, basically the deployment started at 16.01 and it ended at 16.03. So it's fairly took two minutes of time, somewhere two and a half minutes of time, just to less than two and a half even minutes of time just to deploy your code, which is based upon the template. So let's quickly see. And it is it has come out as a success because there's no error and it has completed as a complete deployment. So let's quickly go here in uh, your, again, in your uh, um, <clears throat> Azure portal and look at it here, that how does it look like? So you do see here that we have created a test database based upon that and we have, uh, uh, this is the server name which is mapped to this. And if I go here in the MySQL server and go to MySQL server console, just gonna add a SQL server and again in the Azure and just refresh it, it should be able to pop it up here. Wonderful. So you do see here that TestDB is here. I'm gonna uh, give my password, which we have all seen there. <laughs> so, and what it says, why this pop-up has come? Because uh, if you look at my previous deployment, we have done, uh, when we are just using with the PowerShell, we have done the firewall um, assignment as well. We have not done any kind of handling in my template-based deployment, and that's why the pop-up is here. So I'm gonna just click here, add my IP, existing IP into here. Okay. There you go. So my another database, which is totally created with the help of a template and no manual intervention, no clicks, no definitions. And I can easily go ahead and deploy my uh, standard JSON file, not the parameter one file, which has all my details in here. And I can go ahead into my source control, uh, do a check-in and I'm good to go. Next time somebody asks me, I have to just pull it from there and push it with the help of a simple command or a partial script. So that's pretty much all about from my side. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Manohar and the DPG team for giving me an opportunity to talk here. And thanks all for joining. <laughs> thanks, Avnish. There's, I think there's one more, uh, one question. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think you have answered that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful day. Thanks, Avnish. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.